Hey, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. Sean, I'm super excited today. As am I. Because we're going to talk about 3D printing, yes. fabrication, uh, but we have a special guest. Yes, Jackie Wan, a.k.a. Valcro, who I've been following for a long time uh, due to the amazing lightsaber that he posted online. And not only did uh, a great print of it, but uh, a lot of uh, nice paint job and weathering on it, too. That's right. He works with Ultimaker um, to model some interesting designs mm -hmm. and puts them out online. Uh, you may have seen some of his projects out there. And he flew all the way here from Toronto to share with him, us some of his projects. Nice guy. So you're going to chat with Jackie about some of his projects. Yes. And let's just get to it. Yes. Hi, uh, we're here with uh, Jackie Wan, also known as Valcro, uh, who has been kind enough to come the whole down from uh, Canada to share some of his uh, prints with us. Um, I stumbled across Jackie um, when he did this amazing lightsaber print. Um, and it uh, is a multi-piece print that had a lot of detail on it. And he was just, I just felt he was of like mind to the way I design things. So we kind of started an email conversation and over the uh, you know past year or two, we've met up at various different maker fairs and other 3D printing events, and we finally uh, got together in the same place. So welcome, Jackie. Yeah, thanks. Great um, to be here. Yeah. So we have a we're gonna have a few different things to present. Uh, the first one, though, I I felt it was appropriate to start with the lightsaber. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got a uh, new Star Wars coming up, and I uh, can't think of a more appropriate way to start things off. And it's how we got introduced. So. Um, this is a great print, and it's all uh, it's done all on a filament printer, um, which was really impressive. And uh, you actually did two versions. Yep. So, so I, I created two versions mainly because I thought um, some people would like to print an easier one, and, and then other people would want a really accurate one. So I, I joined the the RPF forums, and you know a lot of information, like a lot of amazing people and information yes. there. Uh, and that's where I got most of the uh, the blueprints and like and picture references and all that stuff to make this. So I thought, you know, that crowd would really appreciate uh, a really detailed version that's really accurate. Right. Uh, and then the sort of everyone else would want to print something that's easy enough to do. So the first version had four parts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's mainly consisting of like this part, this part, and this part. And, and it was basically you could print it on any printer and it would work pretty well. Um, and then uh, this is the 14 piece version, uh, which is the more complex version. Uh, it's a little bit harder to print. You, you're going to have to sort of um, play with your settings, but the end result is much better. Uh, it's much cleaner and it's much more accurate to the original uh, OB1 model. So let's let's talk about that because what um, what really drew me to your discussion of it is, uh, you know, you're, you explained why you printed it uh, the way you did. So let's, yeah. let's I, and the one, the one part that, I, that really stood out and I think is a good example are the buttons here, yeah. right? So we'll, we'll take this apart then to, to give a better view of how this all goes together, but like the buttons were a good example of that when you did the four-piece version, yeah. uh, this section would print with the buttons in, in place. Yeah, exactly. And so why don't you, let's talk a little bit about why that doesn't necessarily turn out well. Yeah, so so printing direction matters the most in, in sort of these uh, FDM type printers. So for the buttons, uh, this uh, the buttons would be printed like this on the four piece from here and up. So this would be an overhang and it would create a, sort of like a, an artifact uh, or you'd have to create supports which would also create an artifact. So, right. so the buttons ideally are printed in this direction um, so that they're round and then you can have all the detail on the side. There's even knurling on here. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to get that detail any other way. Right. Um, so those buttons I knew early on that I had to make them uh, print this way for the sort of advanced version. Right, right, excellent. And so, and, and this is a lot of modeling work as well. And I, I, before we get into taking this apart, I'd be a little curious, like, let's talk about like, how did you get into 3D printing? Like what are, are you know, were you doing SolidWorks CAD, you know, yeah. modeling or what, like how, did, what happened? So, so my background is in visual effects and um, motion graphics. Mm -hmm. So I sort of had a lot of the uh, modeling background already. So, you know, I'd, I'd make things for film and, and like television, I'd, I'd do like, uh, like CBC graphics and stuff like that. So, so modeling was always sort of a base skill that I had. Mm -hmm. So going into 3D printing, um, it's sort of an easy translation over because I can just you know print the models that I made. There is a learning curve um, going from just 
you know, CG models into printing models because you have to make sure it's watertight. Uh, you have to take into account printing direction. And then you have to take into account physics too, which is weird because like in visual <laughs> effects, it, it doesn't matter. You, stuff can interpenetrate. Right. Um, like you can you, just cram things together. Yeah, you, you yeah. can have missing faces. But once you get into 3D printing, uh, you have to think physically, you know, which, which is interesting. Uh, I found that a cool challenge, actually. I don't think people think that's actually like a thing you have to think about, but <laughs> as a CG artist, you, you do. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I did texturing for a while, and then I, I went into uh, lighting and rendering, and then uh, I did motion graphics, and then now I'm sort of bridging all of that stuff together into 3D printing. Right, because you're, you're doing real life uh, texturing now. Yeah, because exactly. You, you paint these when they're done. Yeah, right? so, and, and you know, airbrushing is very much like texturing as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, that translates over. And we're, we don't have the, the painted one today, but uh, Jackie has a really nice walkthrough of painting and weathering uh, one of the finished lightsabers. So that's, that's worth checking out. We'll try to put a link for that as well. Great. Um, so, Moving, uh, and I've talked about this before on Tested, that um, what people don't realize sometimes is moving from something like animation uh, and modeling or game, you know, modeling mm -hmm. for games, movies, animation is a lot different in certain ways than um, modeling for 3D printing. So yeah. uh, why is that? What, what, what is the difference? Um, the, the difference is, uh, first of all, when you model for visual effects or motion graphics, you're you're modeling um, with with the intention of adding textures and shaders onto it later. In three D printing, all that matters is your model. So right. you know what you see in your modeling program may not be accurate to what might print out because it only accounts for the the polygons. So if you had a sphere, um, your your software and your CG program will will you know more or less look like a sphere. But when you print it out, it may look like a like a hexagon type of sphere. Right. So, so you have to sort of think of all that stuff. And then there's tolerance involved as well. So you never really have to think about tolerance in, um, in CG modeling. But once you get into like real life modeling, uh, you know, 0.1 millimeters do matter between parts. So that f they fit together. Yeah, exactly. Right. So especially if you're doing a, like a 14 part piece, um, you know, the tolerance is very important. So like, um, like these parts fit together. There's almost no seam. So, so that is, is the difference between point like zero five millimeters and like point one millimeters. So, with with doing that type of stuff, when when you're when this whole thing has to fit together and the tolerances or anything, how many iterations did you find yourself going through until you're like, nope, that doesn't work. <laughs> nope, that doesn't work. Or, you know, um, I I've been pretty lucky, or or my machine has been pretty good, but I usually go through only maybe like one or two iterations per part. <laughs> That's um, impressive. And and I think this is the, this is the thing you have to sort of catch yourself on because I find myself like you want to print things because you just want to play with it and you want to see how it feels, but um, it's it's a trap. Like don't do that um, because if you if you just sat there and then you really like okay I'm going to design this properly, uh, do all the proper tolerances and then print it out. Like you'll you'll go through maybe like one or two iterations max, whereas if you went the other way, you'd go through like twenty before you get to something yeah. like. You'd like. And I think that that is a, a really good point about three D printing, because three D printing it's often uh, also rapid prototyping, yeah. um, uh, because which is kind of a misnomer in a way because it's, it can it can take a long time to print this stuff. So, yeah. um, uh, and it is really tempting. It's just like. Print yeah. it out, try, print it out, try, print it out, try. Yeah, which well, you end up using up a lot of time. Well, one thing I do for, for that, because it does take a long time, is I'll actually design in sections. So I'll design one part, um, and then I know that part won't affect the next part. So if I, if I design this part, uh, I'll design this part as well so that there's a connector here. Mm -hmm. uh, but then without this part, I know I can start printing this part, you know, as I design the rest of this. Right. So, so I sort of have a workflow going, you know, there's like, I'm always designing something while I'm waiting for a print. So, um, like design it properly, but at the same time, you can organize your time so that you can optimize your printer time. Because, you know, by the time you finish designing here, this print will probably be done and then you can print this part. Right. So, so you know, you can think about it. Like the, the more you plan it out, the, the better it usually ends up being. Good. That's a lot of discipline. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I, going back to what you were saying about uh, modeling for the you know games or or motion graphics or TV um, you kind of hit on already but a lot of that is like when you have a video a video game is a really good example uh, you know if you have like a, a weapon or a, or a 
piece of armor or something like that. Uh, a lot of like the nuts and bolts and screws and like weathering yeah. and all that kind of stuff is all a texture map. It is it is painted on, and there's all kinds of tricks that you can do to make that appear like there is actually a yeah. screw there. And what what people don't realize a lot of time is that that in in this case it has to really be there. So you yeah. have to you have to model every single nut bolt rivet dent like all that stuff. Yeah. And and uh, I, I think. People don't realize that sometimes it's like, whoa, you know, and, and that's when, you know, if you're working from existing assets, a lot of times it'll be missing a lot of detail. And we'll, yeah. we'll touch on that later when we actually will talk about some video game assets and, and stuff like that. But um, let's let's walk through. I love the let's take this apart. I want to show all the okay. different pieces because it's it's pretty impressive. So so this uh, I designed it with um, sort of easily assembly in mind. Um, and also, uh, basically, when I started this, I, I didn't want it to be like glued or anything. Yep. So that was one of my main goals designing this. So I designed all the connectors into it. And basically, this this clamp holds together the whole <clears> thing. <throat> um, and it's held on by this pin. Um, so I can show you. Yes. We can take this part. So this pin pops out like this. Um, and then the pin just falls out. And then this releases the pressure on the clamp. The, the bubble strip comes out. I, I love this. This, yeah. And then uh, basically, this, you know, without the pin in place, it'll. So it has a it has a groove in here that yep. has a corresponding uh, in there that, that clamps on that, holds yep. it in place. And same on this side. Yep. So, and then uh, in here we have uh, spacers, uh, okay. so that this middle piece doesn't fall out or fall into the other parts. Uh, initially, I designed this middle piece in case people wanted to put like a flashlight or laser inside. Right, right. Uh, so like there is room. Right? Yeah. So and, and there's a hole that goes all the way through. So mm -hmm. if you put a blade on it, um, you know, I was hoping somebody would mod it and it'd be really cool. Yeah. Uh, but this is what this is. Uh, this also. This looks like a, a kind of like the crystal almost. Yep. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. And, and this also acts as um, a sort of like a friction thing for the buttons. It actually pushes the button outwards so that right. you can give it a little bit of give. Right. Uh, so without that there, the buttons come out. Right. Um, and then this this is one part that's printed like that. Um, these parts, this is just a um, friction fit on there. Nice. So, that's and it has, so we got, we have little catches that go into the, the top piece there, or yeah, the bottom piece. Yeah, and the corresponding yeah. catches. And then if you turn it like 30 degrees, it'll lock. Nice. Um, and then we have this part here. This is a like a three prong. This is one of my thing. actually. Let's uh, we can. Yep. You have the blown up version. This I, this was ingenious. I thought. Um, why don't you talk about this a little yeah, bit? Yeah. So I, I love the turn and twist. So this is how this is how this connects. Um, it's a it's a three prong. You can turn it and then it comes out like this. And and what's special about this is that it prints in both directions. So it prints like this or prints like this. So I can sort of use it in um, any other design mm -hmm. and just uh, basically, it, I wouldn't have to worry about it printing properly. Um, and printing up and down is kind of very important for like 3D printing. And this also prints like this or like this. Which is nice. Yeah, and then um, it's it's shaped in a way so that it doesn't like string a lot. Mm -hmm. So, because if you have stringing inside the interior grooves, uh, it won't fit properly. So just for those, uh, stringing is when, uh, you know, you have molten plastic coming out of the tip there. And sometimes when moving from one area to the other, you might get a little like hair strand, think of like a glue gun. Yeah. Uh, and that can get things messy. So there, you, that's where you, you don't want that because it'll be messy or mess up your tolerances. Yeah, like if there was a string across here where, where this goes in, uh, it, it'll block it and it'll have issues. Um, but, but yeah, so this is a blown up version of that. Yeah, this is great. Um, and then this part just slides on and it, it, there's a little bit of lip. This is what I'm talking the, about, as the a stopper. 0 0.01 yeah. millimeter. But uh, it's amazing that it could print. It, that, I mean, because that's... <laughs> yeah, a lot of the times I'm surprised it can, it can actually get this accurate. Yes. Um, like, like the pin, for instance, like there, there's a tiny groove on this <laughs> pin. Yes. And, and this holds this piece. And that basically holds the whole thing together. So. A lot of the times I'm surprised it actually will do that, but I'll, for the small parts, I'll, I'll test out because it takes maybe like five minutes to print. Right. So I'll, I'll print those out just to test like tolerance-wise if it starts melting or whatnot. And so uh, so basically, uh, you could, by dividing it up into this many pieces, you could optimally uh, arrange everything so that it printed the best. So like these yeah. buttons should print like this so because 
Uh, it's going to draw better drawing it round like this and up and you'll get the knurling on it. Um, this will print better this way once again because of this. Yeah. And uh, if you're trying to print like this, it's not going not gonna to work so well. Um, and, and then the other thing that I like to point out with doing this is by doing this, it allows you to do a lot of different materials too. So you can actually get the clear little bubble uh, uh, strip um, and you can do, you know, uh, the gold or brass or yeah. black parts or whatever like that. And, and I design like that a lot of times because I try to design models so that uh, if you if you weren't a finishing person, if you yeah. weren't really in the painting, you could put it together and look pretty good yeah. just by printing in different colors. Yeah, and, and this is this is split up in that way as well. Like I thought about that early on. Um, like I was pretty new to airbrushing when I started this project, so I wasn't that confident in my abilities. Um, so uh, when I designed this, I, I made every piece that was a different uh, material, like a different piece. So right. so this is supposed to be like black, and then this is this is black, and this is silver. And then this, these are bronze. So like, even though this would print totally fine, you know, together like this, um, I separated them out so that I could just spray paint this uh, gold. And I think it's a good example of putting a little bit more effort and going the extra mile can make a big difference. Yeah, in and it'll save you way more time in the long run right. uh, if you break it out. Because then, like, if you, if this was printed like this, uh, you would have to mask this part or you would have to paintbrush the edges, and that would be a lot more difficult. Like yeah. on the painting side. Um, than if you did it this way. And it's an extra piece to print, but it's not that big of an right. issue. Well, Jackie, this was a, a great design and, and definitely what caught my eye. And uh, there's there's a lot more you can check out with. Uh, Jackie did other write-ups on the, uh, the lightsaber and a really nice tutorial on how to uh, paint and finish it yep. with some really good grunge to it, uh, which is nice. Is, is there a place where people can check that out? Yeah, you can go to uh, ridiculousbricks.com. I'm sure it'll be on the We'll website. put a link. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a tutorial where like I, I paint this uh, and I use salt to do the weathering yeah. and, and, and rust. And you can download the files. We'll put links for that as well. Yeah. But uh, we, I would like to thank uh, Jackie for coming in. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, more with him uh, in the near future and we look forward to that. So thank you. Great. Thanks.